I wanted to start with just a warm up and a couple of drawing method, drawing exercises. So I have some sketch paper and I have a pencil. I'm going to be using a HB mechanical pencil. And if you look at my screen, you're seeing this red shape. I want you to grab, I'm going to do about two sketches on this paper here. So I'm not going to make it that big. I'm just going to quickly try to draw this red shape. So I should start it by saying this. Can you draw a triangle? Easy. Just tell me how and, and we could look at diagonals and triangles are really easy to draw and you can do a multitude of, of different types of triangles even. Isosceles and rect rectangle triangle. All the different geometric shapes. But here, I want you to simplify the lines and I'm going to start over here on this corner. And what I'm looking at is somehow I'm looking at variations of, of little, it's not just one triangle, but I could almost see this entire section as one, two, three lines and almost a fourth. I know I'm making these a little light because that's how I usually draw. We draw from big to small and from light to dark, but little by little, I'm going to imagine those lines simplified and I'm going to add just a little bit of curvature trying to identify the direction. Most important thing here is the angle and the direction of that geometric shape because that's what it comes down to. We want to see, am I getting the right angle? Am I capturing somewhat nearby the size of that line? So I can have this angle, but I can make this shorter or longer. So I need to have kind of a reference beyond the angle, which is also the length. And then obviously we're looking at a little bit of the curvature of the lines. These are not all absolutely straight lines. They have a little bit of, maybe a little bit of curvature, a little bit of tiny bits of angle, not completely horizontal or vertical. Now there are small little features where, for example, I have, if you're following along with me, I'm coming to this peak here where I see this tiny little piece that then turns into somewhat of a sharp edge, a somewhat of a cylindrical but pointy triangle. So I can create a relationship between these two. Is this one longer, shorter, or straight level with this one? That's going to tell me about my proportion. So if I'm way over here, that means, oops, I missed some lengths, maybe they made this one shorter, or maybe made this one way too long. So I begin to look at the shape that I'm drawing and the relationship between some of those edges. So for example, here when I get to this corner of this shape, I see if it were to continue, there's a nice little angle to a little tiny edge on the other side of it. Can you see it? That eventually will point me to this side that goes like this and then like this. So this little edge that kind of lines up visually for me with this corner where it curves kind of inside and has all these little, it almost feels like, what are we drawing? Is this a map of somewhere? And yeah, it's supposed to kind of feel that way, like it's completely abstract. And there I am. So just to show you, I'm going to kind of pencil this in. There's my shape. Now, for me to confirm, does that look anything like it? I want to see, is it stretched out too short? Is it wider or longer than the actual model, the reference that I'm looking at? Uh, what do we do next? And I hope everyone's there with me. I'm going to flip it around. So what am I doing? I'm just going to flip it upside down and I'm about to reveal to you what we just did. What we just did was we drew the negative space of the image we're going to work with today. How easy was that? So we drew the sky and the edge and the contour, the shapes 
the major shapes of the negative space. And what do we consider negative space? I want you to follow. Now, this is going to be tricky because now your brain knows. Now your brain thinks it knows more than you are actually looking when you're seeing the thing in front of you. So your brain is going to try to make up information that is not there. And how am I going to prove that? Let's see how we do with that negative shape. So I'm showing it to you. You see it there? Now let's go ahead and draw that. So now that I know, oh, that's that tower thing. And there's going to be a nice little rectangle there with the decoration. And there, right about here, we have a little arch. When we begin to name things, we start getting into trouble. When I turn my focus away from what it looks like, the shape, and allow my brain to kind of begin to name the thing that somehow I can simplify. Say, for example, road, street. That takes my focus away from what we originally did. Angles, relationships, and lengths of line. That's it. The closer you can look, and the better you capture the angles, the lengths, and the relationships of those. And sometimes, see, we, I'm talking, I lose my place. So you definitely don't want to do that. That's a big no-no. And there we have it. So I just drew the negative space that is in red down here. So that's just one simple tip for how do I start a drawing when I'm in sight, on site, and I'm going to draw all these buildings and I'm going to look at all this open space and the street that curves with the tunnel and all these windows and all these things, simplifying it. And one way to simplify that I find is the most effective is to see everything like this. So instead of drawing, and you could actually look at your negative space by drawing the red shapes, or you could actually draw the contour of your subject, which would be drawing the white shapes that you're seeing on screen right now. And this should be the way for you to get started with that drawing. Um, let's take you back and see how we revisit that. Now there's one more thing I want to show you. When I see this, now we're down here. Oops, went way too far. So we are going to start with this image here. So we have our image, and I'm just going to flip this paper over because this is another way. What if I were to combine? And today I want you to actually use a combination of both when you need to, but this is the one we're going to most likely go with for the structure, the foundation of our drawing. And that's what we're going to do on our watercolor paper. So just a quick sketch. And I'm going to try to make this a five-minute sketch. Do you see the lines? When we look at our image, I want to see those lines. So now I have a, an idea of my composition. I see this line. So one way to read this line. I know I'm already off, and I did it on purpose. So if you see me right now, these lines seem like they would meet somewhere over here. And then this line would go upward like this. So when I try to work the foundation of my drawing, how do I actually confirm that my lines are working? Well, one way is I place my pencil. And I'm going to switch over very quickly like this. And you see artists going like this. What you're doing is you close one eye to make your binocular vision monocular. You're flattening the image you're looking at and you're going to place that pencil or pen or brush right over that line. And then you could bring it right over to your paper. So obviously we're working with the reference. I'm going to place that on top of my reference and I could just 
transfer it over to my paper. So what you're going to see here is this. When I place the pencil over my, and I'm actually going to do that. So I'm working from an iPad. The image is on the iPad, not printed. Makes it a little easier for me. And I'm going to bring that right over. Notice how far the angle is. If I would have kept on going, everything was is going to be off. So when you draw your line, you need to check it and double check it and confirm it before you move on. Once you move on and you think, yep, that that's, I think I got it. There may be some extra work or not satisfying things that you're going to find out later. So you saw how I double checked it. I confirmed it. I'm going to go ahead and check the one at the top. That's very close. I'm happy with that. And I did that one actually a little closer to where I want it to be. From here, what would be the next stage that I look at? Other structural foundational lines. And once I begin to see that, okay, this line here, it's not completely vertical, but it's a little bit just, if this were 12 o'clock, it's starting to go towards 12.05. That's one that I use all the time, a clock. So this is definitely not six o'clock. So if you're seeing a clock here, you're seeing my pen, that's 12. That would be three. This would be six o'clock. So it's definitely not nine o'clock. It's about eight o'clock. And that gets me a lot closer. This would be seven, this would be six. So it's just one thing that I use when I need to get to that line. So I know this is not 12. It's going already in the direction of a little towards the right and I'm going to bring the other line so notice what happens very quickly I can now begin to introduce another element that we just saw earlier which is negative space so imagine the sky as a shape right now do you see that triangle so if your triangle is not looking like the one on screen right now and you could actually see the other one on this side which as you can see has a sharper angle All of a sudden, your drawing is done. I mean, foundationally, structurally, you could do anything to this from this point, and you're going to be in the neighborhood at least. Where do we go from here? More lines. So notice that we got from the biggest, I would say most important or essential lines, to some of the smaller, more descriptive, You see what's happening? I added one more here. I don't know if you saw it right here. And that begins to be, oh, it's not a diagonal. It's not a vertical. What do I do? It's not a horizontal. This is a C shape. So we begin to deal with curves. Once we begin to deal with curves, how do I check them if I have no angle or, well, you just use what we did earlier with that negative space and try to match the shape inside or outside of it. So you see here how it kind of diagonally goes this way and then just curves a little bit in. And we can continue going on and on, adding smaller and smaller lines. So you get the idea. Once I begin to add this feature here and I begin to add these features here, I'm beginning to add perspective. I'm beginning to add detail, which is one of the things that usually gets us so in trouble because how at what moment do you begin to deal with what in your mind is detail it has to be never hopefully you would continue building from biggest to smaller to smaller to smaller to more complex until you reach a point where i it's done it doesn't need any more because you reach the level where the descriptive qualities that you didn't even know you were looking for, but some of these surprises, see, now we get carried away with smaller and smaller things. That's where we begin to lose it. So in one word, what I want you to focus on today is what is essential. 
Now beyond this, we don't deal with a lot of light. There's not a lot of light and shadow here. That would be the next step, mapping out lights, shadows, where we see them in order to create the volume that we would see. Let me put some shadows on this side of the building here. And you immediately begin to see, oh, okay, I see what he's talking about. That's, you know, it's a mid-afternoon type of lighting. And little by little, we begin to develop that. So combination of this method with basic simplified lines for structure, for foundation, and that combination of negative space, we're going to begin to construct our drawing. And now I'm going to go to watercolor paper. So number one, I'm going to actually work horizontally because we are working with a landscape format. Just very quickly add this image there. So I'll retrace the steps. If you need them, I'm going to leave them at the bottom of the screen as you see me working with them. Now, one thing I am going to switch is I'm going to switch to a much lighter pencil, also mechanical pencil, but this has a 2H lead, which is going to make my lines really, really light. But it all depends on the quality of the final watercolor that we're going to be making. Uh, do I want the lines, the pencil lines to show through? Then I'm going to use a little bit of maybe darker pencil. One thing I am going to do, I am going to add a small frame to my watercolor. So I am going to use a little bit of masking tape. By the way, I am using uh, 9 by 12 Canson Hot Press watercolor paper. It's also great for working with ink and watercolor which I may show you a little bit how that would work at the end. Now, the other thing about uh, urban sketching is, do I want to spend two hours sketching every single little thing at this site, or should I make this a five, 10 minute sketch? Now that is, it's a tough one because I feel you have the same qualities that you can achieve a beautiful sketch, five minute sketch, or even a one minute sketch, believe it or not, that is going to be just gorgeous, beautiful, um, that could compete with a two hour sketch or a two hour drawing, two hour painting. Uh, and you may say, no, I don't believe that. You know, if you take more time, it's gonna ha definitely be better. For this exercise, we are going to take the entire hour and a half that we have to develop it. But you are working at your own pace. From here on out, I'm going to give you what I would see, no matter what level you are, just general ideas, um, how I would start about it. So here's another tip. I'm starting my drawing. Now I'm looking and I'm visualizing. So I'm sitting there, beautiful Germany. I'm sitting there in a corner and I'm looking at this just perfect composition. Now I have my paper ready. I have my pencil. Visualize my first lines. Now, do you see the line that I'm about to draw? Does it go into this corner? Does it go on this side of the edge or does it go on this side of the edge? So notice that there's another clue. This line doesn't go right to the corner doesn't go on this edge, it actually goes over here. And from here, I can actually, once again, begin my measuring the line. Make it sharper. And what I want to do at, at this stage is, I want to have eyes on my reference, not so much on my paper. Begin to draw a little bit looser. Going to confirm the line at the top. And one thing, again, goes from here. That's not the middle of the page. It's a little bit right about here, I would say, a quarter of the way. And then it dials down 
almost meaning this line here. So you have clues everywhere that once you begin to learn how to use them, you're going to be in good shape no matter where you begin. Knowing how to use those secrets, those methods, is only going to make your drawing better. I, I know I need to make it a little bit sharper. Now you could also play with perspective. When we add these diagonals, what we're doing is we're manipulating how we see the perspective. Now you don't see these lines. They're very light, very ghostly, but they're there. And I'm having a sense also of where my middle is and beginning to have a sense of that negative space. So I move from this image to those lines. So from here, I want to visualize in the middle of my paper, which is important, how off center is that line and make sure that I have the space for my composition since I'm working proportionally and am I going to crop that composition so obviously my middle is here I close one eye and I could see it on my reference that it's just off to the side and now I'm focusing on that negative space that we talked about now how high how close to the top to the edge is that this tower here how do I see if this triangle that I'm making here is in fact matching I can check it with that technique where I place my pencil my eye right over my eye, and over the line and just check it and it checks out now the thickness of this I also want to look for clues and I'm going to do that and it is Every time you are drawing, watercoloring, painting, what you are doing, in fact, is solving problems. There's a little problem or a, a puzzle, and you find the answer. So the puzzle is, okay, I need to find an, a match to where this line, how thick would it be? So if I'm going by eye, and it's okay, you can actually make this just a nice, fun sketch that does not have to be identical in terms of accuracy. And I'm actually going to begin to do that to give it a little more character. Notice, for example, I see these lines, if they were to extend where they convert, where they would meet. And that literally points right at the edge or almost top of that tunnel or that arch. So I'm just going to sketch it in and begin to make this drawing a little bit looser. I don't want you to make this kind of like an architectural drawing. That If that's the style that you like, then you're going to have to bring out a ruler and make more precise measurements. And there are methods and techniques for that style, that type of drawing. It, it's not what I'm going for today. And I think one of the things that's missing in this image, now if I would have taken this photo, I would have maybe given this tower a little bit of a side edge here, just so I could see the side of it, and maybe add a little light to it. And that's obviously going to shift the angle of this tunnel. And make it look, the reason I'm going to do that is just so I could play with a little bit of light. On the side of it so I have this triangle here and now trying to match this line there it is and there we have it so you can begin to see oh I know where that is and since we're working with watercolor let me add a couple more. There could be something where I could begin to wash right now and work the lines that I need and begin to develop through drawing with watercolor, not drawing with pencil. Uh, but I want to develop this just a little bit further. Now, I don't want this to be a drawing, then color it in with watercolor. I want it to be a nice, in a way, 
technically speaking, going to be what I called earlier urban sketching, where I have a good sense of line that is going to be really nicely balanced with color and watercolor technique. So this tunnel needs to be a little further. And at any point, you need to make corrections. Since you're working yourself up slowly, there's no, no work that is lost. You just make your correction and continue. And it is better to do them now than later when, when it's kind of too late. It gets tougher and tougher. So now I begin to look at these lines that are coming over from this edge. And I need to look a little bit closer at my reference. So if you're looking at my, ref, at the, at my screen, you may want to begin to look closer at the actual drawing and some of the lines as you see them in your drawing because once you have that general read of the structure you're in good shape so i begin to look at some of that negative space that we did earlier and how do i do that i could do it with one continuous line which clears a lot of this just line that i had as a guide early on Having that help, that assist from that line, that triangular shape that we developed early, gives us much more confidence. And there's that little peak showing right through there that's important. And the distance between these two buildings. So we're gonna also begin to look at what techniques of coloring, lighting, drawing can we use to better enhance our scene. So right here, I'm using just a few of these lines. And I want to enhance also the perspective of this building. That little tower here, which don't want it to be too specific yet. Don't want it to be part of my getting caught up in detail. Taking me away from the way I want to continue setting up the drawing getting an overall sense. So you begin to see how it's developing. You know, you could add just a few lines, setting you up for how we're gonna deal with the color. It's time for me to deal with this curve. And some of this visually there's a lot of contrast and shadows here that I would love. So I don't want to make this very complex in terms of all the elements that are smaller, closer, darker. That could be a little bit distracting. And instead, I love this red on this side over here as part of this bottom edge. So I'm planning ahead. I'm beginning to see the next stage. And here we have this roof where I could also play with the shadow. Some of these edges. So my line is now becoming just a little bit thicker. I could see the edge. Wow, the perspective of, of this roof is really interesting. I'm going to sharpen it just a little bit to give it a little more Again, playing with lights and shadows. There's a lot of things going on here. Remember, don't get into detail just yet. Break them into... So there's one big triangle there. And there's a line that divides it. That's what I'm saying. And yeah, and then there's going to be a square. And then there's going to be all these extra markings and lines and windows. You don't want to get there. You, I'm just giving myself little markers for when it's time 
to do that. So just sizing it, getting an overall sense of the reading. And I most likely will do this with watercolor instead of pencil lines. So I'm reading some of these windows here too. And just the decorative aspect of some of these lines. Done. Simple. Some of the edges. So I may have got carried away a little too much here. Now, am I going to add these additional lines here with the nice chimney? I think so, because it also plays to what I wanted to do with that side perspective and shadow. And you can play with a little bit of the angle so it doesn't catch this corner and look too confusing. And there's another chimney here. Let's go ahead and put that one in. Also, a little bit of perspective. So it's not too flat. Otherwise, it would just look like a rectangle that's floating up there. There we go. So finishing up this area, I actually should have moved to the lines that I'm going to be seeing on this side. Now these are most likely, they're going to be all parallel. And I'm going just from corner. Of this building here, which is that yellow building. Notice that there's all these little windows. I'm not going to add them there. I want to really focus on that structure that we were talking about earlier. That key word what is essential in the scene what gives this scene the the character that look that made me stop here and spend an hour and a half sketching it is it the little potted plants and the what kind of lines obviously we see those beautiful colors and that will definitely come into play. But I'm seeing the foundation, just the edges and the big simplified shapes. Of pretty much triangles, rectangles, cubes actually. Triangles, squares and cubes. Not a lot of curves, not a lot of... Beginning to see some diagonal lines right over those windows. And this arched door right here. Just giving it a general idea of placement of location there. And I think once I have, and you can begin to see now that I have all these lines with no detail. Pretty much no detail. You can begin to see, yep, yeah, now I can actually just see the scene. I can identify the place. And beyond that, I have a sense of, we're going to begin to work with lighting and how that's going to play out in order to, to give it even more character whether it's morning or sunset what kind of color techniques or color schemes I can come up with so more vertical lines here I don't want to make this a super detailed scene in terms of how exact how accurate remember I'm still focusing on that essential the word which means the thing that stands out. And if I'm looking at, well, everything stands out. I love that window and I love this. You need to, it's strategizing. And the more you do this, the more you practice, the more you're going to learn for next time, from this time, 
how much could you have done with and without? Because at some point, one of the, I don't want to say the worst things that could happen with your drawings is you go too far. So how do I know when it's, when I'm getting there close to that too far? Well, you pace yourself. You slow yourself down and really stop and analyze. Is this essential? Are these lines important, crucial? And we, like I said, we could get really easily caught up in trying to draw every little rock here. Every little line that describes every little break and rock and and lose it. So there we are. I have my drawing ready. Now, one technique that I, I absolutely love is wet on wet. And wet on wet is going to be very loose. I have my watercolor palette ready to go. My first selection is going to be, so I usually work from background to foreground. It is, generally speaking, the way you would want to do this. So obviously the sky is going to be important here. So I'm going to go with one of my larger brushes. I already wet my, my watercolors and get them ready for painting. Just activate them with a little spray. Now what I'm doing is I'm mixing a little bit of cobalt blue with cerulean blue. And one thing that I absolutely always, always recommend is having a sheet of watercolor paper ideally the same one you're using to test not just your color but the technique that you're going to be using the moisture of the paper so this is not going to be a watercolor technique class i do want to touch on a few things i wanted to make it once you have a solid drawing I could do a lot of simple things here with color that is going to make this beautiful. Um, and that's one that I wanted to show you. So you don't have to do this. Um, if you were to Urban Sketch and you have this beautiful pencil drawing that's ready to go, you could emphasize with ink lines. And this is a different type of watercolor. It, it, you can actually do it with pencil lines that are darker. It does compete a little bit with it. You could do these essential structural and even push it to the beginning of details where you can begin to see the scene come alive with ink lines. So then you can just watercolor uh, and do the washes and the layers to create that beautiful balance, that beautiful combination of line and color. Um, I am tempted to do a little bit of that. Let's go ahead and just do this sky. So I'm going to go ahead and just wet, add some water, some just water to all of my area, my negative space that we drew early on. I'm a little bit careful managing the edges, some of these edges, and I want to see how in my scene I have this beautiful kind of turquoise building with that nice yellow orange building on the other side and that you mentioned at the bottom I mentioned it earlier that bottom right corner that nice beautiful warm brown red that's gonna give it a pop and how I'm gonna really work that in with sky and also with the street those colors uh, I don't want it to distract too much so I'm going to use a little bit of just a quiet bit of blue. And I'm going to use a little bit of gravity to let it play. Just a little bit down into the water. You want to use a little bit of lifting. So with the dry brush, I like a little bit of a different technique as well where when you have that wet on wet and you have a nice beautiful wash 
or a layer that you just applied. To manage your edges, what does that mean? Soft edges or hard edges? To me, that is crucial for the overall look of your, of your drawing, your painting. The better you manage soft or hard edges, and that is obviously your technique, how you manage uh, your technique. So wet on wet usually has that nice soft edge within and it could reach a hard edge where I where I have it stop. So for example, here, I could always grab a little more water and I although I do like it, I could soften it very carefully, which is almost a way of lifting as well. And because I am adding a little more water, I'm running the risk of that cauliflower effect where the water that I'm adding could push the pigment that is trying to settle. So you see how soft right there, you see how soft and quiet that sky is. And it is resembling a little bit what, what we see on the scene. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to look for that turquoise color. That's a beautiful turquoise color. So I'm going to go with some phthalo blue and I'm going to really water it down. And it does not have to be exact. But I want it. It's blue and it has a little bit of that green. So in a way it is that turquoise. Might be a little bit greener. So I add a little more. Oof. That was way too much. But I do want a lot of this paint on my palette. A little more phthalo. And let's see what this looks like. Maybe a little darker. That definitely is a little bit deeper. Let's see what it looks like watered down. So you mix your color, make sure you have it exactly where you want it before you bring it in and before you start painting. Because most of the magic, most of the tricks happen. You have your drawing, you have your setup, color palette, your color scheme. And then when you begin applying it, I think that's it. What I'm going to do here is there are certain areas of white that I want to preserve. Some of that brick, some of that window. But overall, I want this to be a nice, loose um, watercolor application. So I want to play with it. And I'm going to go ahead and grab my biggest brush here that I can use, which is this... Hake, one inch, one and a half inch actually. And I'm just gonna wa apply a little nice thin layer of water. And I'm gonna apply it all over these two buildings. Now I am trying to stay within the lines at the bottom. Some of those windows, they may get lighter or darker. I'm gonna lift it actually. But I wanna give it just a touch. Just a playful edge. Of overall color. And this is just going to be my first layer. As this dries, and if we do need to help it out, I always have noticed that that's grabbing a nice loose color here. I'm going to lift some of that, especially right here at those edges. And I just want to make sure I capture the right amount of moisture. Need a little bit lighter. Now, did this have the does it have to be wet on wet? No, 
you should be exploring the techniques that are not just comfortable, but that you know are going to serve your drawing. That you can experiment with it as well. Yeah. This would be a, a great one to experiment with. And you see, as I'm lifting, I'm just leaving enough information in that white spot to let that dry. And this one may be a little bit trickier, but we'll, we'll test it out. And it's going to be this yellow, this nice, beautiful yellow, yellow ochre. Has a little bit of an orange punch to it. That seems very close. So I grabbed a little bit of quinacridone yellow and yellow ochre. You could touch it with a little bit of, I have new gamboge, which is a nice warm. And this building, I'm gonna make it wet on dry. So I know there's few exceptions like those windows. I'm gonna add the watercolor directly, wet on dry. And, but wait, what about all those areas where we need to all those details and well I am leaving the white areas so those windows just open in order for me to come back and work some detail But this wet on dry technique, it is a beautiful way to set up a nice layer that you could just come back and rework. Now for this side, one of the things I wanted to do was just to play with a little bit of light. I'm going to add just a touch of quinacridone burnt orange just to give it a sense of shadow to the sink to the color so it's not that flat and notice that here i don't have to preserve that much white there's a nice little edge but the windows and smaller details that i need to work with on this side are not that many And now a little bit of burnt umber, very carefully here. Make sure they don't mix. You don't want it wet blending into it. And I'm just adding a tiny little color to the what will be the roof or the bit of the roof that we see. And just like that, we begin to see, okay, it's, we begin to see kind of the feel, the sensation of volumes coming together, perspective coming together. Now, you're, you may be saying, well, what is that? I wanted to give it that interesting look. And obviously, when you have this amount of color and technique going on, the only way to balance it out is with line. And that is what I'm going to do when I begin to refine the line. I'm going to do it with ink. As I add my details very lightly, very loosely, I want to go ahead and make sure this is dry, and it is, and I want to capture pretty close. They're very close, so should I play a little bit with the color of the tower? I'm going to go ahead and give it just one quick... Just a little bit lighter and a little bit yellower. Just like we see in the middle of it. And then I could come around with the second layer in the darker areas. But the most important thing here is make sure your colors 
the paper, the moisture on your paper is controlled. You're not painting and your colors are mixing in your layers, causing a little bit of chaos. Although I like chaos and I have, I have a philosophy of you kind of want to invite chaos here and there. Experimenting is what ex it pushes your technique forward. Making a mess, making mistakes, you learn more from that and begin to push your technique further than if you play it too safe all the time. So just a couple of lines here, wet on dry. As I'm finishing up with some of this color, a little bit more of that orange, and we're gonna see this coming together in shapes of color. So what I'm looking for right now is just what kind of brush stroke, what kind of technique is going to serve best in order for me to capture that shape of color. Believe it or not, sometimes the color, although it is important, it's not the most important. The value and the shape of that color. Because you could shift the color of all these buildings. As long as you maintain the values, the right value of the colors, of any of the colors you combine, and then the shape of them. And how you apply that technique, that's another variation that creates interest. Just adding a few more lines. And remember, the shapes get smaller and smaller They get a little more complex. You want to be more and more patient, more careful. And it's all about how you manage that technique. So this is moist, but I want to test it. I want to see if, yep, it's still a little bit too wet. So it's going to maybe blend with some of that color but I like the look, so I'm adding a little bit of wet on wet. That, that wash, that layer that I applied earlier. It's still just a tiny bit, just a tiny bit wet. But I like it enough where I could create a little bit of difference between that. And it's not as flat. Now this here is still too wet. But you could begin to see the difference in the arrangement of the colors of that building. I hope you could see that. I am going to have to move a little bit faster here. So going again, another work in this area. Just a quick wet on wet once again. Wash. And this one's going to be just a nice warm gray. Now, because I'm working with blue and orange, should I have a bluish gray? There is a little bit of that bluish gray here. Easiest way would be if you have it, Payne's green. I'm sorry, Payne's gray. And I'm gonna touch it with just a little bit of that turquoise that I have on my palette. And I'm gonna see what that looks like. And just gonna lay it down, kind of stabbing at the paper, just letting it sort of create a texture. A little bit random, not too opaque, not too saturated. I want to do this in layers. When we work a watercolor like this, if you can create two, three layers of controlled technique and colors, the richer your work is going to be. And it only takes that, two, three layers. Sometimes you can do it in one, two. It's a little tougher. And I'm going to warm up that 
gray with a little bit of buff titanium. So I'm beginning to close down some of these, and layer it right over the side of this building here. And it goes right all the way back. So I'm beginning to fill up masses, shapes. Bring it over again. Right into this area. So more and more I'm, I'm mixing up big, as big as I can, bigger shapes of kind of local colors. And letting them dry just a little bit. Now this one, this one's going to be interesting because I want to mix it a tiny bit, a tiny bit of that turquoise with a little bit of light. So you notice the difference there? Wet on dry, a little bit of light, same here. Easily rework those windows in. Now we have our first question here with this color. Definitely darker. I will do second layers. So this one's a little bit yellower. Now it, to me it almost feels like that Naples yellow, which would be a combination of yellows and if you have it, it's tricky with watercolor to use white. I do happen, I happen to have a Naples yellow, so I'm gonna test it right here. Just a quick wash, wet on dry. And I'm going to lift just a bit of that edge for white corner. Just a bit. And this will be layered once again to create a little bit more contrast between that and the tower. Okay, before I, get, I continue, I'm going to need to give this a little bit of air. A little bit of hot air. And I, I do like some of those color blends that are happening. And the only way to really know is when they're fully dry. When you look at the combination of that bluish gray with that warm gray and how those hard edges, you begin to see some of those edges playing around. They're soft and hard at the same time. And they're gonna have you have to let them happen in order to get just things that make you go, ooh, I like that. How did I do that? Well, it was you, but it was you with the watercolor that allowed it to happen. And sometimes watercolor, that's the beauty of it, that it does things that you intend to, but then it always surprises you. It could always surprise you. So here's an example of wet on dry, harder edge, not so surprising, looks pretty, but when you add wet on wet and some of the edges begin to combine and create sometimes automatic texture it looks it could begin to look like the brick or concrete that we we're talking about so that that's what we're looking for this is where i would contend with okay i can keep going with maybe a smaller brush there are areas for big washes still that i could do depending on how loose and it's not how accurate you want this to be it's how in terms of style how playful 
or how serious. And when I mean serious, I mean kind of in an academic, architectural way that I mentioned earlier. Lift a few of these things here. So one of the ways I wanted to show you, and you don't have to do this, you can continue layering and building up, is this one. So I have ink pens, and I have several different ink pens. So there are these Micron fine liners. There's fountain pens that I use with permanent ink. And there's all kinds of different sets of fine liners with ink that you can draw and then paint over and you won't have um, your ink will not go anywhere and I'm going to revisit some of these lines some of my drawing now what I'm about to do is I don't want to just draw the entire scene so this is basically my setup for me to come in and most of the detail that I would add here now I have a zero five Maybe this is going to be a little bit too, too strong. I want to make sure I have a good sense of that. So I don't want to draw the entire scene. So what I'm doing here is you can't see my face, but it's called blind drawing. What is that? Blind drawing. How is that possible? Yep. My eyes happen to be on the reference. My hand is moving freely on my paper, and I only check to see if my line is remaining in proportion every, to be honest, every eight, ten seconds. This takes lots of practice, but the best thing is you're going to add a quality of line that is unparalleled. Why is that? I believe, well, you, number one, if you really truly are committed to just looking at your reference and capturing that early thing we talked about, which was that negative space, qualities of some of the shapes, some of the angles, the only way you can really, really do that is by looking at your subject. What happens most of the time is we get caught up in our drawing and we look at our page we're looking down at our page more than we're actually looking at the thing we're supposed to be looking at and that's where we lose it that's where we lose the connection so now I can begin to see more and more clear I'm actually connecting with my subject I'm in this place and in this place one of the things you can do is just begin to add I want to show you this quality of line here. If you if you see where I am, I'm at the bottom of that building. There's a couple of plants. What I'm doing is I'm looking at the shape of them and I'm just squiggly adding dots and dashes of lines that don't identify exactly but read. And you may say like, what is that? That's just nonsense with the quality of line. I want it to be exact and detailed. Well, once again, it comes down to style and what kind of look you're looking for. For me, it's back to the word essential. Notice how I did those windows there. They're just a few lines. That's how I see them. So how you see them matters. And it's Remember from the early, early drawing we did, how you think you see them, how you think you know a window is supposed to look like, and how it actually looks right now. How it, it goes a little bit beyond how it looks. It's how it feels. How it feels. And you could get a little bit more. In this case, I'm getting a little... stiffer you could see that trying to get that nice verticality to it but you could get really casual with it and you realize oh my gosh it's i could really do this with my eyes closed and obviously i don't want you with your eyes closed i want you with your eyes on your reference now i'm beginning to feel that this is competing a little too much 
with my color. And that's what I was talking about earlier. When I can create a nice balance between line and color, this is one of those techniques for urban sketching. I'm just moving down to a smaller tip pen, a 03, and begin to add some of that line. Now you could do this with watercolor. Remember, I can move back and forth between watercolor and line. And I shouldn't do this at this moment. Right now it's, it's a matter of I'm going to add a little bit of just darker black watercolor between these lines. And to see what it does, how it plays. And it, it definitely is time for me to move to a smaller brush as well. But I have this one handy because we still have a lot of information to deal with over here. And this is where I want to kind of put a lot of emphasis. With the line. And what I'm going to be doing with, with the watercolor that will accompany it. So notice that I'm just looking at the line effect of the shapes that I see. And I'm going to come back over with pops of darker or lighter. And remember, this I left light because I do see some light. What I'm going to do is darken some of those areas, a little bit of shadow, that will immediately give this the quality And almost that old building feel. Now, break my line. All my lines are not... I use the word stiff. They're broken. They're jittery. But the most important thing, what I want to really, really emphasize here is, if I'm drawing lines, I want to be looking at where those lines are coming from, meaning I want to have my eyes on my reference. It's the only way to really get better and better. The more you trust what you see. And you could really take this far because some of us really pick up or try to pick up every single detail. But I'm trying to focus on, as I make a quick read of this, in terms of line, I also want to make sure I'm focused on that, what is essential to this image. And I'm making a quick read of line, thinking colors coming. So leave some room for the color that's coming. Now I have a nice, beautiful feature that's going to come in here. I want to make sure I capture this one. But then you realize, well, actually what this is, is an exercise, a playful exercise in observation. And you are absolutely right. That is exactly what it is. How you show us what you see. How good can you capture it? How much do you trust it? That actually is, I think, key component of this style. And, and again, it goes a little bit towards, you don't have to use these lines. It could be all done with watercolor. But in a way, it, it will end up somehow having a little bit of that same philosophy. Watercolors that could be just a little bit overdone, oversaturated, or some that are playful, simpler, and give you just enough information for you to read and understand what's going on in terms of line, color, perspective, light and shadow. There's a lot of information going on here with greens. And I am going to add some of them. And at some point, you could lose some of these lines like, oops, that was supposed to be lower or once again, 
the realization is you can actually do whatever you want and you are the boss any line you add could actually be a new discovery but you don't want this to be just a drawing what do i mean by that just line 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 i'm gonna pause here with these lines here and bring a smaller brush maybe a number three and i am working with round brushes natural hair and some of these colors now that i have my color here as i use my layer i'm going to bring in wet on dry second pops of color notice that one there and i want to keep this very loose i want to keep this literally like i only had 15 minutes 30 minutes to sit here and sketch this scene and take it home with me and remember it forever how it felt to be there so i'm picking up a lot of the just essential keep saying it information now it's in terms of color you see how it begins to just pop it doesn't get much further in terms of i need a little more blue here a nice little a nice little extra show of technique and the more and more i begin to layer these i can begin to play with my brush strokes once i begin to get smaller and smaller shapes darker and sharper colors this scene begins to come alive now that was a very powerful and very staining color let's bring it in a livelier a little a little play more playful just like we did with everything else there's a little deeper green at the bottom of that door do i need to be that exact just see what that color does let's go into our burnt umber some yellow ochre making sure my colors here are dry and they won't mix and i could do this once again wet on dry wet on wet one thing i should have mentioned earlier one of your best friends to be able to capture the information as you see it is squinting if you squint at your image whatever you're trying to pick up as you develop your strategies just like we did early with with which lines should i focus on you simplify the information and when you simplify the information you realize wow it just reveals itself to you that which is essential pops up it pops out now I'm, I'm getting really as far into the third layer over here so you could begin to see what it should be looking like one step at a time and it almost feels like i'm continuing to draw let's go over to this side and as i add a second layer here I want to make sure it's wet on wet so i'm going to add a little bit of water right over it nice little hard edge here and then bring in a second darker color just dab it in kind of create a little bit of texture but just letting it happen Bring in some extra water right at the edge. 
and that also creates that cauliflower effect that I mentioned a little bit of lifting for light just pops of light here and there and an extra bit of color down here at the base Well, there's a nice rich color right between these two buildings and I'm gonna just have to dab it in wet on dry and it gets a little bit darker as it goes lower and then a little bit back to light right when you go A nice little point we'll let that dry bring in some of that same color and on this side yes I need a lot of ink lines but you could also do it with watercolor and I want to show you that here so I have the right brush, I have my color, and as a layer, I'm just going to literally draw these lines in. The most important thing is that the area is dry, so you can control the edge and the application of that pigment. So I would want it a little bit richer. Notice the difference between line and no line and how you could use either or or the combination and then make the decisions. Which do you prefer? And it, it does taste, it, you have to test them. The only way to know is testing them and seeing the difference. Let's get a little more burnt umber in there and add some of these thicker and add it a little bit more like a shadow. So you need a little bit of play of light and shadow in order for this to really begin to pop. And there you kind of see it. I'm going to mix it just with a little bit of blend at the bottom here. We have a lot of windows that are going to be surrounded by just a little bit of this darker red-orange color. I'm using Burnt Umber with a touch of Quinacridone Burnt Orange, which is just a beautiful color. And with that bit of rendering there, you see how that would work. Making sure we have the edges of these windows and following that philosophy as we get smaller and smaller and more complex. Just a quick read here. A little misstep there. But overall, what you don't want to lose is a sense of playfulness, the sense of you're sketching information. and really trying to nail down what made this scene so interesting. And it comes down to lines, shapes, combination of combinations of shapes and colors. You saw how I used a little bit of line.
going a little bit heavier here because I did want this color to really pop in this scene. So I'm going to bring in a little bit of red, pyro red here, with quinacridone burnt orange and just lay it down. Oh, I like it so much. I'm going to bring in a little bit of it right over here. And maybe even back here. So you begin to see how colors starting to work together. And moving from first to second layer. And developing your smaller shapes. So here we are. As we continue adding more and more lines, the question is, how far do I go before I know I'm done? And it is really one of the hardest questions. How do you know when it's finished? And I take you back to knowing what is essential. And when you're dealing with line and color, you're asking very, very tricky questions that only you can answer. In the end, only you can answer. And I always use the comparison to cooking where you are safer on the side of under cooking, but once you overcook it, it's really hard to bring it back. Same thing here. You want to be cautious as you reach closer and closer to that which feels finished. You want to pace yourself a little bit, a little bit better, a little more. I don't want to say slower, but just a bit more cautious of what decision, type of decision you're making in order to be able to, as you add smaller and smaller steps, smaller and more complex shapes, you take it in. You could easily see the finish line when you're getting there. The thing that I'm working with here is adding a little more contrast to some of these lighter areas. And I have a combination of colors. So it's all about light and shadow. Dealing a little bit with finishing touches and textures. I could come back with more wet on wet. Now that I have my lines in place, I could see how far I could push the color. And it'll be much easier to see. But very, very careful. as you get closer and closer. I'm gonna add just a little pop of green all the way back here. And you have some little, just hint at it. I'm just gonna go ahead and hint at it. And some of these windows got a little bit too dark. So it's a new look and I'm actually manipulating the only way that we actually represent an image like this, a scene like this, is understanding that we're not taking a photo. We're taking liberties all the way through. And even if you're a photorealistic artist, 
you're making adjustments you're making decisions as you work through line shape color technique to give us a, a, a something that's gonna visually interest us just create a little visual interest and the, the more you can manipulate the combination the variation of those things color line shapes layers the more interesting we're gonna interested we're gonna be and there's a lot to say for simplicity but saying where less is more you could also test that to see how I'm getting a little looser with some of these lines and what I'm seeing now is as I add more line and darker layers of color my sky just kind of disappeared so pushing and pulling that's what I'm doing and when I push too far in terms of line and color something else gets lost but we're gonna let this dry and add more line smaller gauge of line lesser and lesser uh, size and complexity of detail but you can see how you could take this and really be there and walk away with a beautiful watercolor beautiful scene a beautiful sketch beautiful drawing um, and then gauge how far you need to push either or the line or the color and I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time.